think you know Shaper Box, I bet you're still missing some of its best tricks. Today I'm bringing you my insider secrets that will slash your editing time, spark fresh ideas, and transform sounds from basic to bombastic. So if you feel like you're not getting the most out of time, volume, drive, and the other shapers, stay tuned right to the end. First up, here is the fastest workflow when drawing waves in ShaperBox. I covered every detail of editing in my ShaperBox LFO guide. I'll link to that video in the description. But here is a quick condensed version to help you draw faster. Click in empty space to draw lines and spikes. At any time you can undo and redo, or trash the wave and start again. Hold control and click to draw sweeps and wobbles, and alternate between these to combine sweeps and lines. From here, drag points, click them to change weight and bend lines into curves. Select points to move them together and use the background grid as a guide to perfect the flow. And to find out how to use pens and other tools, like I said, check out my full video on LFO editing. Now, saving time is all about reducing the number of mouse clicks you have to make. So this snapping shortcut will speed you up when drawing. You can edit off the grid unquantized, or you can lock points to the grid by toggling the magnet icon. But if you find yourself turning on the snap magnet every time you load the plugin, save yourself all those clicks by doing this. Open the right click menu and select this snap on by default option. Now snap will always be on when you load the plugin. And if you often jump between snapped and unsnapped, then hold your shift key to toggle snapping on the fly for fast, efficient editing with fewer mouse clicks. Now you know how to draw waves quickly, let's look at some ways to store and edit them for total workflow freedom. The user waves down here can be used as sketch pads when drawing waves. Click to store your current wave in a slot. Now draw and edit to your heart's content without worrying about ruining your original curve, because at any time you can reload your original wave in one click without lots of undo and redo. This has become a big part of my workflow. As soon as I've drawn something I like, I store it and I'll save different iterations in the slots. Say I want to compare slightly different versions of the same wave, or just try out wildly different curves. To find out how to switch through these waves with automation or MIDI, go and watch my MIDI secrets video linked below. Now note that these user waves are stored per preset, and these nine slots are shared across all shapers. So these are saved and loaded with the current preset, meaning if you load a new preset, these waves are gone. This is why I use this area as a temporary scratch pad. For a more permanent way to store waves, check this out. This favorite section is your own personal bank of preset LFO waveforms, unique to each shaper. So if you draw a useful wave that you want to keep forever, store it in a favorite slot. For example, here in Volume Shaper, I can save my favorite sidechain curves. In Filter Shaper, I've got my go-to filter wobbles, and so on. So each shaper's favorite section is unique to that shaper and can be accessed in any instance no matter which preset is loaded. Now it's worth mentioning that we've got something amazing coming soon for ShaperBox. I can't tell you what it is just yet, but if you want to be among the first to know, head to cableguys.com, scroll down and join our newsletter. All right, back to the video. Once you're comfortable with basic drawing, doubling and tripling is a cheat code for even faster edits. Here's a basic ramp down. I'm gonna click this 2X button to double the wave and double it again. You could keep doing this for crazy fast shapes. But let's undo back to four fins. You can also make a selection and double only that. And if you hold shift, notice that 2X turns to 3X, meaning that you can three times a selection into triplets. So now we have a complex rhythm made only using 2X and 3X. Combine this with the other editing tips we've covered, and you can quickly cook up some crazy waves from scratch. And that leads into how to work with triplets in ShaperBox. As I just showed, hold shift and click 3x to multiply your wave or a selection by three. The other way to triplet is useful when you want to draw or edit directly on the grid. Right click and select this triplet menu option to change the background grid to triplets. Then you can draw in triplet timings. 
Another trick is to use the right-click menu to copy, paste, and steal waves for inspiration. Head to the browser and search through presets until you find a complex LFO wave you like. Then copy the wave and paste it to another shaper to steal it. Now you can modify the wave to your liking. Here are my favorite ways to edit borrowed waves quickly. If you've pasted a wave from another shaper, the scaling might be wrong. So to quickly adapt, you can use the main slider to shift the wave. Alternatively, select all points. You can do that with this button or via the right-click menu. Then simply drag these handles. Or to drag from the center, hold Option on Mac or Alt on PC and drag a handle like this. And you can hold control as you drag a corner of a selection to skew. So instead of dragging points individually, get the hang of these shortcuts and you'll be able to adapt any wave to fit the flow of your song. And once you're done, store your newly edited wave for future use in the user waves or favorites section. On the topic of finding inspiration from other waves, here is a top secret trick you should try. Say you want to load a wave preset or use a wave by clicking its slot. As you can see, each wave has a different height and scale. But let's say you only want your wave to cover a certain range, say only around this height. Well, if you shift click a wave to load it in, it will be auto scaled to the height of your current waveform. So here I'm shift clicking waves and they're all restricted vertically like the first wave I loaded. On a similar note, here's something useful you can try with this random button. Let's add four points, one on every beat. Now, if I click random, all of these points are completely randomized, which can get messy. So let's undo back to the four points. Now, when I hold shift, the icon changes. You can see this random modifier. I'll click random and the four points are locked on each beat, but are randomized vertically. So use this to keep your timing locked in place, but try out different heights. From here, I recommend you practice combining all of these shortcuts together for the fastest workflow. Make sure you subscribe for more videos and find out more about our plugins at cableguys.com.